Yeah, good evening, and uh, thank you for such a wonderful audience uh, for a patient listening. I think I'm the last speaker, so please bear with me for the next 10 minutes. And uh, it's a very simple story. Uh, first of all, let me bring you back uh, from the Himalayas, because the last presentation which was made, I'm sure it took you to the Himalayas, so I'm bringing you back to Nandi Hills or Chamunda Hills. So my name is Hiren Praveen Shah. I am uh, founder and CEO of uh, Replus NG Tech Private Limited. Uh, I worked in a corporate for 20 years. Uh, I worked in Panasonic for 17 years, and I also worked in Delta for three years before I took the plunge uh, into entrepreneurship. So uh, for me, luckily, uh, in Panasonic, I had very good exposure, the early exposure for lithium-ion batteries. Uh, my friend spoke about lithium-ion batteries way back in 2004. So 1991 is the time when Panasonic had started manufacturing lithium-ion batteries. And earlier, it was used for laptops. It was used for mobile phones. Um, later, it found expression into industrial and uh, uh, electric vehicle usage. So I climbed my ladder in Panasonic when I joined in 99. Uh, Initially started with compressor sales. Somehow, I was always connected with environment and ecology. So when I started uh, my career, I was selling compressors R134A, which was the non-CFC refrigerators launched by Whirlpool, if many may remember I Size Baby ad. So that was the first product uh, which I had uh, promoted in India market. After that, the next one was rotary compressor for air conditioners and moved to flat panel TVs, LCDs, LEDs, semiconductors, motors. Eventually, because of the way I was selling these products and solutions for the first time in the market, I earned a tag which is called champion for new product sales. By virtue of that, I was given the opportunity to join a PLA, Panasonic Leadership Academy, and I was put on a global advisory committee which tells Panasonic what is the next technology that they should bet in our region. And the region and the territory was India, South Asia, and Africa. So luckily, during this time, around 2006, Roadster had already hit the market in USA. There were talks, very early talks, between Panasonic and Tesla for a joint venture and a collaboration. Uh, during this time, uh, they were working on the S model. So as a part of the Global Advisory Committee, me, along with another six people, got the exposure on how lithium-ion cells can be used to make an electric vehicle. So this is my picture, and this is the first S model, which was built by Tesla. This is in Japan, and uh, this is the first time uh, you know, the battery was being designed together by Americans who are working on the application side and the Japanese people who are working on the battery side. Uh, eventually, this converted into a joint venture between Panasonic and Tesla. Uh, they came up with the Gigafactory in USA, in Nevada, and eventually this model was successful, the first successful model of electric vehicle on the road. Um, after that, I came back to our region and tried to promote this technology. At this time, there is only one electric vehicle in the India market, and that is Reva, which is using the lead-acid battery. Uh, okay, it may be very early or too early in our times, but this was way back in 2010. After you know, getting this first initial exposure and the success, like Kapil Dev in 1983, the movie, he says, once you have tasted blood, the tongue wants more. So I did not stop there. I looked for other applications where this could be successfully used. The first breakthrough was in Reliance Geo, because Geo was coming up with telecom towers. And the industry, if you all remember the telecom industry, the way the towers are constructed, and the way power is being used there, almost for four to six hours or even eight hours, in the rural area, sometimes 18 hours, it's running on DG sets. So that was the first breakthrough with the team working on the design of the telecom tower mast, putting the battery inside of the mast because it should not be stolen, it should be safe, it should be IP67. So meeting all those conditions, uh, we managed to get 35,000 tower business from Reliance Geo. And at that point of time, this was in the history of Panasonic, one of the largest business deal that was done for a lithium-ion battery product. Uh, 
I am talking about way back 2010, 2011. Even at that time, Tesla had not hit off with those many numbers. So that was really a big breakthrough. And uh, I thought that this is something that I can bet my life on. And at the same time, when I studied about Tesla, the reason why Tesla was born is because Elon Musk, it seems, uh, was working on the rockets. He was actually working on SpaceX. When uh, Barack Obama was the president, and uh, one of the guys from his office had retired, and he was one of the consultants in, in Tesla, or rather in Elon Musk's office. And there was a casual discussion about, uh, you know, why are the Americans giving lives in the Gulf War? And the reason that pointed out was, it's for the oil, because we need energy security. We need to secure the next 20, 30, 40 years of oil uh, for our country. That's why we have to send our army and they have to fight the war. So this was something which really got registered in my mind. And that is how Tesla was born. So he said, why don't we make it electric? And that's how Tesla was born. So this got registered in my mind so strongly that I bet my life on this. I thought this is something that can replace oil. So, again, with a lot of enthusiasm, I asked Panasonic, let's make a factory. Let's make a Giga factory in India. We already got orders from Reliance Geo. Uh, all right, my board said, you need to find an anchor customer, somebody who can consume 40% of that Giga factory capacity. And the rest of the 60%, we'll find out more customers. But at least you need to find an anchor customer. So I started hunting, and luckily I got through with Tata. We had a very long, deep discussion for two years. We did a lot of extensive research on various applications where these batteries can be used from data center, resorts, um, to DG, DG replacement, to uh, vehicles, to anything and everything. You know Tata is from salt to you know, chemicals. So anything and everywhere, we tried to see how the demand could be from this group, and whether or not it makes sense to have a factory in India. Unfortunately for me, uh, the board decided not to go ahead with the project because for two reasons. One, they were not sure whether the electric vehicle space is really, really a bubble which is going to burst or is going to shift into a different direction altogether. Because at that time, Tata had also launched the hydrogen bus if everybody remembers, in 2016. So the board disapproved this proposal, and I was very, very heartbroken after working for two years. There was some hope. Um, one of the board members recommended my name to Mitsubishi, and Mitsubishi had a collaboration with Delta. They had just sold the lithium-ion battery division to Delta. So I joined Delta. After joining there, I deployed India's first BSS project in a container, a 20 feet container, 4C battery. Uh, we also deployed the first microgrid in Andaman Islands, which is still in use by the military engineering service for the very critical radar surveillance system. <clears throat> we also deployed multiple platforms, uh, including uh, chargers. So I worked there for three years and had a lot of uh, first in India, but again, the idea for me joining there was to bring the Mitsubishi factory to India and make a Giga factory in India. Unfortunately, the technology which Mitsubishi had <clears throat> was a power cell. It was not an energy cell, and India is primarily an energy cell market. So again, uh, my dream was shattered. So I left uh, Delta. I resigned as the a senior director and a business head of energy business solution. So during this time, I was very unsettled. Like, I was programmed for success, but I was not programmed to handle failure. This made me look inwards, and this is the time when I found something into spirituality. And I found a guru, and uh, with this uh, guru, I literally sold everything I had. I had a BMW car, of course, it was not a Ferrari, and I'm not a monk either. So I'm not a monk who sold a Ferrari, but I am a guy who sold his BMW to go with the guru to the 
uh, Mount Kailash. And uh, I spent some time there, which is where I had three insights. Of course, I was chasing success all the while. And for that success, I had given a lot of sacrifices. I stayed away from family. I was living in Gurgaon. My family was in Pune. And everything was scattered. So there were three insights which I had uh, during this journey. Uh, the first one was, I need to move back to family. The second one was, learn from nature. So why I say learn from nature is because if you look at nature, Mother Earth gives everything. She never takes. If you look at a tree, it gives you fruits, it gives you shade. But it does not expect anything from you. It does not expect that you will water that tree every day. It doesn't matter if you or somebody else sits under the shade of the tree. So a lot of things I learned from nature. And the third and the most important thing was finding a purpose, finding a meaning in my life. So again, I went uh, digging deep into what exactly are the problems that we are facing and what could be the possible solutions or what I could do, what I can offer to the world. So these are the pain points. I think we all know about climate situation. We all know about depleting resources. We all know about grid stability and stuff like that. Is there something that we can do? Yes, there is something that we can do. I think we are moving towards renewable energy, but is it enough? The answer was no, it's not enough. Before we actually go to electric vehicles and the batteries for the electric vehicles, I went into a lot of conferences and I had a lot of talks with a lot of experts and PhDs and scientists. And I asked them one fundamental question. How much is the car contribution of carbon emission from a, from a vehicle? From a vehicle, let's say if the pi is 100, how much percentage of carbon emission does vehicle contribute out of this 100? Answer was 15%. So where does the 85% come from? It comes from the polluting grid. It comes from industries. It comes from various other factors. So I thought, does it make sense to drive an electric vehicle while you are charging that vehicle with a polluted grid? It doesn't make sense. And I also saw a picture where people are charging the vehicle with a DG set. So are you contributing or you are actually creating more problems? So this was the fundamental question which arised in my mind. And with this, I started my journey. And this is how Replus was born, with a new approach. The approach was, why charge electric vehicles with unclean and polluted power? Is it possible to make the grid stable through storage? Enter the market with focus on ESS first with a gigafactory, and then later we go into electric vehicles and other applications. Finally, we should also do repurpose and recycling of the batteries. So the, the intent was to enter from generation, move to transmission distribution, and then go to consumption. Consumption is where the electric vehicle market is. And also at the same time, by virtue of learning from nature, we must contribute to the sustainable development goals, which are defined by UNESCO. So I'm happy to say today we are contributing to seven out of 17 sustainable development goals. Uh, during this time, we also framed the policy on what should be the core values that we bring as Replus. The first one was, we should make a social impact. If you are not making a social impact, we should not be in the business. We are here for social impact. Whatever we offer should be secured. Either it's a vehicle, or it's a customer who has a renewable farm, or it's a grid, they should be secured. It should be smart, intelligent, efficient, um, ahead, forward way, into the future. It should be shared, because a lot of things that we see today, maybe not much mentioned on V2G, G2V, here today in the conference, but that is the future. It should be shared, and it should be sustainable. With that, we created some vision mission to enable the transition, global transition towards clean energy. That was the mission. 
and also uh, creating sustainable value for customers and communities across the world. We had some initial success. When I started, I started with consultancy. I started from my house. Uh, we hired a couple of people. We hired uh, a couple of interns from college, freshers right out of college. One of them is sitting here and taking my video. And we told him, we promised him, we may not be able to give you salary, but you will get two hours to eat. You will get the money. If you get the salary or not, I don't know, but we'll ensure that you are not hungry. And with that, we built up a few members' team, and we had some initial breakthrough, and we understood uh, what people are looking for. Again, uh, as you had been in the industry, sometimes you come across some people who become your mentors, some people who give you an opportunity to prove yourself, all those things happen, and that you can only say joining the dots only when you are looking backwards. You cannot see when you are seeing it forward, but it's joining the dots when you are looking backwards. And that's what happened. We found some good people who worked with us, gave us the initial opportunity when we had nothing. We proved ourselves, and they were very happy, and that's how we built ourselves. Uh, the biggest milestone came one month ago, uh, we worked with Mahindra Sustain on one of a very small project where they were looking for a DG replacement. They're looking for an emergency power uh, backup, which can be mobile, which can be mobile on a ACE or a kind of a vehicle where you can charge these batteries and you can bring it to the car if it is an electric vehicle which has broken down on the road or to use it for emergency charging applications. So we had helped them work on that product, and they gave us an opportunity to work on a very large project. Now, this project is India's first <coughs> fully solar-powered village. It's in Gujarat, the place called Madera. And here, the scheme is the sun is charging. There is a sun temple there. Of course, we all know about the Konark sun temple, but this is more older than the Konark sun temple. This is from the 11th century. And uh, here, this entire village is powered by solar power. Uh, in the daytime, the sun is charging the battery, at the same time feeding the entire village. In the evening, the battery discharges. Until the next day morning, again, sun comes back. And here we have demonstrated multiple applications. We have a carport, which you can see here on the left. That's a carport. And uh, here you can bring in your vehicles. 24 by 7 power is available. Again, we are harnessing the solar power to charge the electric vehicles. And this site was inaugurated by our Prime Minister, Shri Narendra Modi, uh, one month ago. Of course, this site was also, this site was also visited by UN, uh, His Excellency Mr. Antonio Guterres. Uh, the beauty of this project was, it's not only a central solar farm, but the entire village has 2,300 houses. Out of those 2,300 houses, 1,700 houses have solar rooftop. Those solar rooftop also charge these batteries. So at the end of the month, there is net metering. Every villager is earning 100 to 200 rupees in every month by virtue of giving that energy to the battery and then taking it in the evening time. Um, luckily, we found an investor. So today, we are invested by LNJ Bilwara Group. And uh, they have a strong interest in this business uh, they have announced uh, one month ago uh, that they will be also manufacturing anodes for lithium-ion batteries. They have a very huge company which is called HEG, uh, Hindustan Electrode Graphite. Uh, they are into graphite business since 1972. And graphite is the common material which goes into lithium-ion cell. May it be LFP or NMC or LTO or NCA. The graphite is usually mostly made from, uh, the anode is always graphite, uh, made from graphite material. So they have a long interest into this business. Uh, so we have a jo joint venture with them. And finally, finally, this is the groundbreaking of the Giga Factory, which happened a couple of weeks ago in Pune. And this is where the Giga Factory is finally coming out. Thank you. So, um, the top 10 virtues which I would like to share with you guys here uh, sitting in this uh, forum. Dream big. Don't think small. Dream big. Imagine, visualize, execute. Passion. Be all in 
or all out. Don't be midway. Focus. Innovate. Create value because that is what will keep you into the business. Desire. Once you reach certain milestone, look for more. Never stop. Keep looking for more. A, a company, a work or milestone, everything is achieved by a team of people. One individual cannot do anything. Serve humanity. The minute I changed my approach from go-getter to go-giver, I got what I wanted. Serve humanity, you will get, eventually in the journey, you will get what you want. You die only once, but you live every day. Ensure that every day of your life is valuable. The most important virtue I feel is finding a purpose to your life. Finding a purpose in one word, in a one Japanese word, is ikigai. Ikigai means what you love to do, what people can pay you for, what the world wants, and what can be sustained. The intersection point for all these points is your ikigai, finding the true purpose of your life. So before I go, this is my second last slide. I think there is nothing that cannot be achieved at whatever age. I mean, a lot of people, when I mentioned I want to give up my 22 years of corporate career and I start a, a startup, uh, my mother started crying. Uh, my wife was very skeptical. She was not sure what's going on. And uh, during this time, COVID is going on. My son is in 10th standard. A lot of people, a lot of my friends, uh, you know, my industry friends, they all told me that, uh, you know, people do the reverse. They work in Indian company, then go into a middle level company, then they go into a multinational company and they retire. I mean, what's wrong with you? And that fire which I got somewhere was when I went to a smart city summit in Surat and there was a guy, maybe around just 20 years old, and this guy had a startup. And he was so passionate about cartoons. He was so passionate about, you know, these uh, Marvel comics and all those things that he started a, he started a, 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 what do you call, a clothes line with all that Batman and, you know, Superman and all those kind of things. And you will not believe it, this guy, uh, Disney, you know, Donald Duck and all those things. And he was so passionate that uh, he actually wrote to Disney, uh, you know, to the, the, the office of Disney, and he sent them his creations. Which are available in Disney World all over the world. And he was just 20s out. But it was just a passion. So I just thought, what is it that this guy has, I don't have. And the answer was, perhaps. He had an event, I had an email. What he had was Perex. When I met him after, the, after his presentation, when I asked him, uh, I mean, how will this? And will I do it to bear? Do you need to just get it for it? I said, oh, well, this, we made money. He said, you won't need money for He said, to run a company, you just need intent and you need courage. You don't need money to run a startup. You have the intent, just put in your courage. And that's the power of you. I believe we all have one life, there is one planet, but there are million opportunities out there. You need to choose your Ikigai and you need to go get it. Thank you so much. Uh, taking this opportunity, <clears throat> my sincerest and deepest gratitude to my CEO, Shreyas, and his entire team for putting up this wonderful show and giving me this opportunity to speak here. I am really grateful to all of you. Thank you so much.